Welcome to my channel. I'm Jaroslav Centek, a professor at the Department of Military History in the Faculty of Historical Sciences of the Nicolaus Copernicus University in Torun, Poland. And today I will tell you about the bloody battle of Limanova Wapanov in the December of 1914. You will hear about Prussians, Austrians, Hungarians and Poles fighting against Russians. For Hungarians and Poles, the battle is a mythical one. And it was also a significant victory for the Austrians. In the following minutes, I will explain you why. The Austro-Hungarian forces was the Russian Third Army, commanded by the general of the infantry Radko Dimitriev. He was a Bulgarian who decided to enter into the service of the Imperial Russian Army. Forces of the Third Army during the battle included 11 corps, uh, General Vladimir Saharov, 11th and 32nd uh, Infantry Division, 9th corps, General uh, Dmitry Szczerbachev, 5th and 42nd Infantry Division, 10th corps, uh, General Zerpicki, 9th and 31st Infantry Division, uh, 21st Corps, General Szkiński, 33rd and 45th, uh, 44th uh, Infantry Division. In the battle, Russians also engaged a part of the 8th Army, commanded by the General of Caval Cavalry Alexei Brusilov, one of the best Russian generals in the Great War. After an Austro-Hungarian attack, Brusilov sent F and uh, 24th uh, Corps to the battlefield. The first one managed to attack Limanova and endangered uh, the right flank of General Roth forces. The second one didn't make to take uh, part in the fighting. Those corps of the 8th Army consisted of 8th Corps, uh, General Dragomirov, uh, 4 15 and 15 uh, Division, uh, 24th Corps, General Zurikov, uh, 48th and 49th Division. Each infantry division consisted of two infantry brigades with two infantry regiments each. Since each regiment had four battalions, the whole division had 16 of them and was stronger than its Austro-Hungarian or German counterparts, at least in the number of bayonets. The artillery of each division consisted of brigade with six batteries of eight 76,2mm uh, field guns each. There should be two batteries of, on the corps level, each of six 122mm howitzers. The problem with Russian artillery was a permanent lack of ammunition that hindered its firepower. Unfortunately, I don't know the number of bayonets in Russian divisions, but they were neither fresh nor exhausted. The composition of Austro-Hungarian forces changed during the battle. Nevertheless, all units were that of the 4th Army, commanded by Archduke Josef Ferdinand of Austria. The attacking forces consisted of General Josef Roth Army Group, based on the reinforced 14th Corps. Besides his 3rd and 4th Tyrolean divisions, he received considerable reinforcement in the form of the Prussian 47th Reserve Division. As for the organization of the forces, on the 10th of December, 14 Corps, 3rd Infantry Division, General von Horsiecki, 4,500 bayonets, 8th Infantry Division, General von Fabini, 4,800 bayonets, 13th Landwehr Infantry Division, General Shekeli, uh, 3,600 bayonets, Prussian uh, 47th Reserve Division, uh, 10,000, but on uh, 1st of December, 11th Corps, uh, 13th Infantry Division, 5,000 bayonets, elements of the 11th Infantry Division, 2,000 bayonets, both commanded by General Kaiser, 6th Corps, uh, 45th uh, Landwehr Division, uh, General Smekal, 6,700 bayonets, uh, 39th Honved Infantry Division, uh, General von Hatfi, uh, 4,800 bayonets, uh, improv improvised force uh, Colonel Reimann, uh, 4,800 bayonets, Calvary Corps, um, General von uh, Herberstein, 6th uh, Cavalry Division, probably 1,400 uh, sabers, 10th uh, Cavalry Division, 
1,400 sabers and 1,100 cavalry division, uh, 1,500 sabers. Besides, those forces under the direct command of the 13th Corps were various small units like batteries of heavy howitzer, Landsturm uh, battalions and Polish Legion. The latter consisted of three infantry battalions and one uh, cavalry squadron with two assigned mountain artillery batteries. Austro-Hungarian divisions were mostly exhausted ones. The Prussian unit was relatively fresh, which received uh, its baptism of fire on the relatively peaceful sector of the Western Front. The Prussians were inexperienced and the Battle of limanova wapanov was their first significant engagement. In the hilly terrain of the Beskids, especially their part called Island Beskids, the highest peak there is Mogilica, with 1,170 meters above sea level. A few other ones also exceed the 1,000 meters. The region was relatively poor and primarily agricultural, with some oil industry in the vicinity of Limanova. The inhabitants were Poles who supported the Austro-Hungarian forces, especially the small Polish legion which took part in the battle. The road net was undeveloped and primary communication trails led through valleys, often along small rivers or streams. There was a one-track railway line from Habówka to Nowy Sącz that passed through Mszana Dolna, Tymbark, Limanowa, Nowy Sącz, but it was uh, operable only partially in the time of the battle. Nevertheless, it allowed gathering of supplies and badly needed reserves. The battle took place in December, so the weather was working against both sides, especially when it was snowy and frosty. The terrain was heavy and favorable for the defender. In November uh, 1914, the Russians threatened the fortress Kraków, so the Austro-Hungarian High Command decided to take most of the forces from the region between Krakow and the Carpathian Mountains and send them into the vicinity of Krakow to repel the invasion there. In the meantime, the Russian Third Army marched through island Beskids and approached Krakow from the southeast direction. Austro-Hungarian Chief of Staff, General Franz Baron Konrad von Hützendorf, decided to attack the opened left flank of the Russians. He designated the experienced and reliable 14 Corps to lead the assault, even if the unit was tired and suffered considerable losses in the previous engagements. At the end of November, Roth's divisions concentrated in the area of Mshana Dolna Rabka and the Prussians gathered behind them. The small forces with Polish Legion screened them and prevented Russian interference in that operation space. During that time, maneuver warfare favored rights, like one on the November 23rd, when Poles ambushed and took a whole cavalry squadron prisoner. Russians learned about the concentration of Austro-Hungarians on December 2nd, thanks to the aerial reconnaissance. The battle was about to begin. On December 4th, Roth's forces began advancing north. They continued the offensive the next day, but Russian defenses grew stronger with time. The Prussians, in the meantime, attacked the Paprotna hill, called Paprotska Wald in German, and were unable to break the enemy's positions. Instead of becoming uh, the spearhead of the advance, the 47th Reserve Division was like a hinge. It fought, more or less, in the same area, sustaining heavy losses and engaging Russian troops, but couldn't gain any significant terrain. In the meantime, on the left flank of the Prussians, Austro-Hungarians wheeled from the northern direction into the eastern direction. The peak of their successes came on the 8th and 9th of December. After that, the Russian resistance was too stubborn to be broken. The more important factor was that General Gusivov wouldn't allow his fellow army commander to be defeated. As mentioned earlier, uh, he was one of the best Russian generals of the war. Gusivov decided, decided to send 8th Corps to help Radko Dimitriev's forces. That move made the Austro-Hungarian situation in the battle extremely complicated. 
Yusef Piłsudski, who commanded Polish Legion in the battle, expected Russian trains and re rear formations were retreating in the vicinity of Nowy Sącz. So on December 6th, he sent his small cavalry force to capture them. Soon it became evident that the Russians were advancing and that a new unit, the 15th Infantry Division, had arrived on the battlefield. Poles managed to uh, retreat towards Limanova, slightly slowing the enemy's advance. They used all black powder ammunition for their obsolete guns, which became useless after that battle. Poles were withdrawn into the reserve and soon received orders to cover the far right flank to protect Mushana Dolna area from the threat of the Russian cavalry. In the face of the Russian advance, General Herbert Herberstein took command of Austro-Hungarian forces in the vicinity of Limanova. The Russians started shelling the place with artillery and ignited some oil storage, causing, causing uh, panic in the town. At that critical moment, the 39th Honved Infantry Division had arrived and General Arthur Arts von Straussenburg became the new Austro-Hungarian commander of the right-wing forces. At the same time, the 14th Infantry Division of the Russian 8th Corps attacked the Kobyla, in Polish it means Mar, Hill, uh, forcing uh, Austro-Hungarians to retreat. The right flank of the Prussians was now in danger, but they were holding the terrain. On December 10th, uh, the Russians uh, counterattacked Roth's left wing and pushed it back behind the Stradomka River. The offensive changed into desperate defense. On December 11th, the dismounted Hungarian Honved Hussars attacked Jabłoniec Hill in the vicinity of Limanova. That move resulted in heavy, bloody hand-to-hand -hand fighting that became legendary in Hungary. Commander of the Hussars, Colonel Otmar Moore, was killed during the engagement with a consid considerable part of his subordinates. Nevertheless, Limanova was secured. Fight of the Hungarian Honved Hussars on the Jabłoniec Hill didn't influence the overall situation much. The battle was decided elsewhere. Commander of the Russian 8th Army, General Blusiwov, as mentioned earlier, pushed his 8th Corps on Limanova and the 24th Corps to Gordice, creating a gap in his lines. It was an excellent opportunity for the Austro-Hungarian 3rd Army, which advanced without much resistance, as you can see from the map. The offensive threatened to encircle the positions of the both uh, the Russian 3rd and 8th armies. The only way of avoiding that was to retreat. The Russians decided to do so on the 13th of December. The 3rd army marched east and the 8th army went north. Austro-Hungarian forces were victorious. But it is essential to point out that Radko Dimitriev and Brusiwov were not beaten, but merely outmaneuvered. The retreat enabled them to shorten their fronts and prepare reserves. So the next uh, Russian offensive operation in that region was only a matter of time. The Battle of limanovo wapanov was indeed a bloody one. Soon after the Russian retreat, temporary burials of the dead started. It took the next few years to create a net of military cemeteries for the fallen soldiers. It is not the place to talk about those graveyards, but they also provide information about the losses. Unfortunately, Austro-Hungarians are often unidentified and without information about the unit and the date of death. It can't be determined if the fallen soldier lost his life during that uh, particular battle or not. In the case of Russians, the situation is even worse. Only seldom uh, were the dead identified. I may only as say that the losses were undoubtedly significant. However, all the Prussians and the members of the Polish Legion buried on the spot were killed during the analyzed operation. The number of prisoners of war is also unknown. According to the war di diary of the Prussian 47 reserve divisions, uh, the Germans alone captured uh, 4,200 Russians. That number was significant already, but it pro uh, probably much lower than the number of prisoners of war taken during the whole battle. 
The 47th Reserve Division lost uh, 1,293 killed from the 10,000 bayonets at the beginning of the battle. Most probably, the same or even higher number was wounded, so one may assume that the division lost about 25 to 30% of its soldiers in less uh, than two weeks. Polish Legion lost 13 dead and an unknown number of wounded or prisoners. Nevertheless, that unit didn't suffer much and was fully operational after the battle. The Battle of Libanovo Apanov took away any Russian threat from the fortress Krakow once for all. The front line was stabilized and the Russians soon decided to switch their attention to the Carpathian passes hoping to reach Hungary and achieve a decisive uh, victory over Austria-Hungary. I want to thank friends of mine, Tomasz Woźny and Dr. Sławomir Kułacz, who provided me with the battlefield photos. The first one with contemporary ones, and the second with the archival ones. Uh, thank you for your attention and sorry for the deficiencies in my English. Uh, I hope that despite that, you managed to enjoy my material. If so, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you didn't do it already. Please leave a comment so I learn what to improve in the following videos. Optimistically, I do not expect you to write, not upload more and close the channel. Uh, if you like the video, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a virtual coffee. It isn't necessary since YouTube is my hobby, but it surely will help me acquire better equipment. Uh, I have included the uh, displayed links also in the description box below. Hopefully, see you soon.